two are going to loll around in your pyjamas all day, are you? No, Dad. Well, when were you thinking of getting dressed? Dad, it's Saturday morning. There's no need to get dressed. He's right, Dad. <laughs> Is he? Yeah, yeah. Saturday's the day you should ease yourself into the weekend. It's a day of rest. Uh, uh, no, that's Sunday. Remember the Bible? The Lord rested on the seventh day, and on Saturday he cleaned his room. Really? <laughs> yes, really, and he didn't sit around watching Jono and Dana. That's because in those days it was Donnie Sutherland. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I so. And another thing, Simon, how many times have I told you the lounge is not for eating? Dad, I'm not eating the lounge. <laughs> Simon. Oh. Dad, why do you have this obsession with making us work on a Saturday morning? Every week it's the same. Yes, well, if I'm working, everyone's got to work. What are you doing? I'm doing the shopping. Oh, that's not work. You love it. I do not. You do so. You can't wait to get down there with your friends and look at the prices and go, oh, that's disgraceful. Look how that's gone up. Yeah, and he shows up because he thinks he can drive the supermarket trolley the best. <laughs> do you still make car noises as you drive down the aisles, Dad? No, I don't do that. Well, I only did it once, and that was during Grand Prix week. <laughs> the Ayrton Centre of the supermarket. Yeah, well, I'm proud of my trolley driving. It's a hazardous business, particularly when they call out, this store will be closing in five minutes. It is no place for the faint hearted. Maybe you should wear shin pads. <laughs> it's like the starting grid in Adelaide, with crazed pensioners elbowing their way through the pack, and they always go to the five items or less checkout, and they always have six. Have they no shame? Anyway, look, while I'm risking my life doing the shopping, you two can do your bit. Go and grab a hand grenade each and clean your rooms. I'm ready, Dad. Ready? What for? Shopping. Oh, no, no, no. You're not coming shopping with me. Oh, Dad, I've got to learn. One day I'll have a family of my own. No, I'm going to take her. No way. She keeps grabbing the most indescribable things off the shelf, like herrings in cranberry concert oh, and roll no. mops stuffed with baked beans. Oh. Dad, I don't want to hear this. That's all right, it gets worse. Last time she came home with a tin of chicken and truffles and aspic. What's wrong with that? It's cat food, for God's sake. <laughs> I only just stopped her from eating it. So I can't come? No. Oh, rats! Listen, Dad, while you're at the mall, try and stay away from the hardware store and the electrical store. Oh, rats. I wanted to go to the hardware store. No, you're forbidden to buy any more toys. Oh, I wanted to get a ratchet screwdriver. Why? Well, wow, I've never had one, and I don't know what they are. <laughs> morning, everyone. Morning, Mr. Craig. Morning, Nudge. I'm going to buy a ratchet screwdriver. Oh, well, have fun. And don't forget your rooms. No, Dad. No, Dad. I'll be with you in a minute, mate. Oh, actually, I wanted to see Debbie. You did? Yeah. I've had another nudge flash. A nudge flash? Yeah, a great idea that'll get us both rich. I love it. Hey, what about me? Oh, you'll still be my friend. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear it. What's the great idea? Well, remember those greeting cards we're doing? Oh, don't remind me. Well, I worked out where you went wrong. Yeah, where was that? Well, they were, they were nice. And, and that market's taken. What are you talking about? Nasty cards. <laughs> Nasty cards? Yes, cards you, you send to people you hate. See, <laughs> I figure most people hate more people than they like. <laughs> it's a huge market. What are you talking about? Well, instead of a get well card that you send to a friend, we do. A get crook card that you send to an enemy. Or a stay crook card if they're already sick. Oh, good thinking, Deb. Oh, this could be huge, I'm telling you. It could be bigger than ratchet screwdrivers. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering why your father wanted a ratchet screwdriver. Were you? Yeah, cause if, if it was no good, why would he want one? Oh, thanks, Betty. Oh, Betty, this is wrong. Oh, is it? Yes, yeah, so you put the specifications in the general letter of agreement. Uh-oh, did I? Yeah, and I didn't want you to do that. Oh, well, I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's all right, Betty. It's not a capital crime. It's just as... <laughs> Why are you doing that? Doing what? Swaying. You're swaying at me. Uh, I am swaying because I am a willow. <laughs> You're a willow. Yes, and I'm bending with your tempest. Tempest? What tempest? Your tempest, the tempest that you are raging because I did something wrong. I'm not tempesting. I'm just pointing out that you've made a mistake. This is not a tempest. Oh, isn't it? No, it's a gentle zephyr. Oh, well, I won't sway so far then. However, if you want a tempest, you're going the right way about getting one. Yeah. You know me when I lose my tempest. <laughs> Betty, why are you a willow? A swaying willow. Why are you a swaying willow? 
It's for my acting. Mr. Pocklington said we got to do it. Mr. Pocklington from the Musical Society? Yeah. He, he's giving us all acting classes. He knows all about it. He was in number 96. What was he? I never saw him in that. He was number 95, so he wasn't in it for long. <laughs> Betty, I don't see the connection between acting and being a willow. <coughs> Well, it's an exercise, see? You've got to train your mind to think like an object. Last Friday, I was a teaspoon. Oh, what'd you do? Oh, nothing, of course. <laughs> Teaspoons don't do anything. I had to think like a teaspoon. Betty, you always think like a teaspoon. <laughs> hey, Dad, what can I do? I'm bored. Ah, oh, congratulations, Jenny. Right on time. I beg your pardon? Well, it's the first day of the holidays. You've been on holidays for exactly one hour, and you walk in here and you say, I'm bored. Well, I am. I've got nothing to do. Well, go and play with a friend. Can't. They've all gone away for the holidays. Ah, uh, don't tell me. Zurich, Rome or Disneyland? Well, we. <laughs> boy, boy. What have happened to Zurich, Rome and Disneyland? Haven't you heard about the stock market crash? <laughs> Listen, darling, you can help me with my typing. OK. No, she can't. Why not, Mr Kelly? Because you'd never keep up with her. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jen. You pretend you're a dish. Why? Because then you can run away with a spoon over there. <laughs> I don't understand. Why are my designs all wrong? Well, Debbie, there's nothing wrong with them, per se. You've got to treat artists carefully. They're sensitive. <laughs> no, Debbie's about as sensitive as a piranha. <laughs> oh, come on. What's wrong with them? Well, they're nice. Well, I like nice. I mean, artists are supposed to do nice. But these are supposed to be nasty cards, remember? Well, I've had enough of nasty cards. I'll see you later. Simon, you're turning your back on a big opportunity here, you know. What opportunity? Well, I'll offer to make you my assistant. Your assistant on nasty cards, you're crazy. Hang on, you offered him a job, who's paying him? Oh, don't worry, it'll come out of my share. Oh, that's okay then. Your share, you, you don't expect to make money out of this, it's crazy. Simon, you're missing the point here, this is an advanced marketing technique, like newspapers. Well, you're going to wrap fish and chips up in the cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean bad news is good business, that's how newspapers sell. That's very profound, do not you? It is? Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> yes. Yeah, see... Say there's a train with 400 people on it and it crashes and 20 people are killed. So? So they don't write. 380 people survive train crash. <laughs> no, but... And say a guy goes mad with an axe in the city. And they don't say. 2 million people don't go mad with axes. <laughs> Subhead. Shoppers have a happy day. <laughs> I still don't see what it's got to do with your cards. It's simple. People like bad news. He's right, son. And see, that's what's wrong with your drawings, Debbie. We don't want flowers and pretty things. We want skull and crossbones and poison symbols. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how about poison ivy? Now, you've got to think even nastier than that, Deb. Well, like what? Like knives dripping with blood, witches, <laughs> goblins, snarling dogs, black cats. Got it? Yeah, I think so. Well, maybe it'll help you to hear some of the words. How about this? It's your birthday. Let's not make a fuss. Just step outside and get hit by a bus. <laughs> now that's nasty. Yeah, you like that one? How about this one? It's a Valentine's. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'd like to throw up all over you. <laughs> How'd you like them so far? Oh, they're terrific. Hey, how about this one? Get crook soon. <laughs> Don't you like that one? Well, I mean, it doesn't rhyme. Oh, it's free verse. Well, they're nicer when they rhyme. Debbie, I keep telling you, they're not supposed to be nice. Oh, look, see what Betty thinks. Oh, hey, hey what do you think of these, Betty? There are, there are, get crook cards. <gasps> You're never going to send that. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? I still think it should rhyme, though. You can't send bad wishes, you'll have bad luck. No, we won't, we'll be rich. <laughs> My father always said, golly, bad wishes are like a boomerang that come back and hit you in the shin. Yeah? Yeah, mine didn't, but. Your bad wishes? No, my boomerang back in Walgut. It didn't come back. <laughs> Why not? Well, because it got caught around Nancy Williams' neck. <laughs> that, that, that don't work then. Well, there you are. Your bad luck didn't come back. Oh, yes, it did. Nancy Williams came up and kicked me in the shin. Well, it was nice just to have the two of us for dinner, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, when those other two are here, we never get a word in, do we? No. No, so we can have a nice, quiet chat by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you want to chat? Okay. <laughs> so, chat. What about? Well, I don't know. Anything. Chat stuff. You know, first thing that pops into your mind. That's chatting. Is it? Yeah, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. I can't think of anything either. Me and Dad took it to the zoo today. Oh, and did he? Yeah, and he took it to Wonderland yesterday. Oh, well, we could do that one day. And he took it to the movies in town last week. Sounds like a great guy. Why don't we ever do that? Well, I just said we could. Yeah. Can we finish chatting now? Mm-hmm, if you want to. Good. Can I watch TV then? Yeah, off you go. Well, that was a nice, warm, wonderful father-daughter chat. <clears throat> I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> oh, Betty, what are you being now? I'm being the waves. Oh, that's nice. Listen, the I was wondering... They travel across the mighty ocean. Yes, of course they do. Now, listen, I was you wondering... You come you were... crashing under the shore in a welter of foam. Betty, do you mind? Could we have a lull in the waves, please? OK. What are you doing? I'm just checking the tide to see if we'll be in this afternoon. <laughs> That's very cute for Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it, Betty. Now, Betty, now that I have your full and undivided attention... Yes, where's it coming? I was just wondering if you could look after things here for a few afternoons. Oh, sure. Why? Well, I think it's about time I started doing things with Jenny. <coughs> like what? Well, you know, taking her places. I'm starting to feel guilty. I feel as though I'm neglecting her. Oh, but that's silly, Mr Kelly. I mean, you're a busy man. I'm sure Jenny doesn't expect you to take her places. Well, I'm not so sure, you know. She keeps rabbiting on about this friend of hers and how her father always takes her to places. So? So I never do. I mean, you know, I always intend to, but I never get around to it. Yes, but that's because you're busy. Well, that's no excuse. I should make time to do things with her, and I'm going to. Well, I think that's wonderful. No, Betty, it's only right. So I've decided this holidays, I'm going to take it to Wonderland and Marineland and any other bloody land I can think of. <laughs> Good for you. No, Betty, you know, you're only young once and kids grow up so quickly. I mean, look at Simon and Debbie. Yeah, I think you should. Should what? Well, I think you should have a look at what Debbie's doing. I do not approve. Why? What's she up to? Well, you know, this card she's doing with Nudge. I mean, no good will come of it. Oh, Betty, they're harmless. They are not. They're bad. And, and, and you know what the Bible says about that. Bad begets bad. Bible never said that. Well, it should have. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about those cards. They're going to be, become like, like hoodoo dolls. Hoodoo dolls? Yeah, you know, the, those dolls of witch doctors stick pins in. Who do? I told you. Which doctors do? <laughs> you mean voodoo. Do I? You do. Well, now I'm confused. Is it who do, voodoo, or you do? Oh. Look, Betty, it doesn't matter. Those cards have got nothing to do with ancient bad luck curses. Hmm, I'm not so sure. Oh, Betty, don't be so superstitious. I'm not superstitious. Catholics aren't allowed. It's bad luck. <laughs> Come on, Jen, pack that stuff away. Why? Because we're going to Wonderland. Why? Because it's fun. And it's time we had some fun. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Jen, hang that up. Let's get going. But, Dad, I'm talking to Katrina. She's back from war work. Well, good for her. Come on, it's fun time. <laughs> yeah, get ready. We're going to Marine Land. Sorry, Katrina. I've got to go and play with my father. See you later, Dad. Whoa, hang on a minute. Where are you off to? I'm going to Danielle. Do you want to come? Danielle? Who's Danielle? She's my new friend. Oh, no, no. We haven't got time for that. All the animals are waiting. But what animals? At the zoo, of course. Come on. Well, can Danielle come with us? Oh, we don't need her. It'll be more fun with just the two of us, won't it? <laughs> Simon. Hi, Jenny. What are you doing? Oh, just mucking about. Well, don't muck about with my things. You'll break them. 
No, I won't. What's up? I've got a problem. Do you want to talk about it? I don't know. Do you reckon I should? Yeah, I reckon you should. Are you sure? Yeah, well, that's what kids your age do. If they've got a problem, they tell their big brothers. Do they? Yep, that's why they have big brothers in the first place. Otherwise, what use is a big brother? Yeah, I suppose so. So, what's the problem? I'm really worried about Dad. What about him? I think he's lonely. What makes you think that? Well, he keeps wanting me to go places with him. What places? Oh, the zoo and Wonderland and Marineland. He keeps wanting to go to them and I have to go with him. Well, that isn't so bad, is it? Well, I didn't mind at first, but I've got a life of my own, you know, Simon. <laughs> have you told him this? No, I don't want to spoil his fun. I can see you've got a problem. I mean, if he wants someone to play with, why doesn't he just take Betty? <laughs> Just about finished these designs. You'll love them. They're really horrible. I'm not sure if I want to see them. Much? What happened to your arm? Oh, I got hit by Peter Blake while he's riding his skateboard. Sprained my elbow. Oh, bad luck. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, how are you going to write the verses for these nasty cards? I know, you can dictate them to me. Well, Deb, I'm not sure if I want to. Why not? Well, I think this elbow is the beginning of what Betty said. What, rheumatism? <laughs> I think it's the ancient curse of the nudges coming home to roost. The ancient curse of the nudges? Yeah. It's been in our family for centuries. It followed us to Australia all the way, all the way from Latvia. Maybe you shouldn't have fed it. I'm serious? Oh, look, you're the first nudge in your family. How can you have an ancient curse of the nudges? Well, it used to be ancient curse of the Noritas's, but I just updated it a bit. <laughs> and now these cards have awoken it. Really? What are you two talking about? It's my elbow. I sprained it when Peter Blake ran into me. It's the ancient curse of the nudges. These cards have reawoken it. Have you two gone totally wacko? <laughs> no, I'm serious, Simon. I came over here to burn all these cards. I, I can't risk it anymore with the curse of the nudges. Why not? Because tomorrow is Air Beater's Day. Eh? Hey? Ladies' Day at the golf course. <laughs> can't risk it. Maybe I should hang a pumpkin round my neck. Why not? Match the one on your shoulders. <laughs> Well, that's what they do, used to do in old Latvia to ward off the curse. Nudge, it's a clove of garlic. You hang a clove of garlic around your neck to ward off curses. Oh, with a curse this big, you definitely need a pumpkin. <laughs> Nudge, think about this logically. What possible connection can there be between Peter Blake and your nasty cards? Peter Blake got me dropped from the basketball team, remember? So? So, I was going to send the first nasty card to him. Coincidence? Oh, yeah, well, explain this. Ever since we started doing these cards, I've been getting really bad marks at my assignments at art school. Yeah, it's the curse of the nudges. Debbie, maybe you're getting bad marks because you're spending all your time on these stupid cards and not on your assignments. Well, maybe. There is a logical explanation for all of this. Oh, yeah, well, explain this then. I just remembered. This morning I had some really bad luck. What? I broke a nail. <laughs> Well, bring me up, Scott. Hey, Dad, you got a minute? Yeah, sure, Simon. What's up? I want to talk to you. Well, Simon, that makes me very happy. It does? Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking the other day, you know, when you were little, you used to bring your problems to me to be solved all the time, and you haven't done that for ages. Yeah, I suppose not. Yeah, and I was starting to feel a little, well, superfluous, I suppose. It's just nice to know you can still bring your problems to me. Yeah. But... Um... Th there is a problem, isn't there? Yes. Okay, what is it? It's you. <laughs> Me? It's you and Jenny. Oh, yeah, you know, look, it's really weird. Look, I've been trying to spend more time with her, and I've been taking her to places, and she hardly ever says a word. I mean, it's like being with a little silent statue. It's as if she doesn't even want to go. She doesn't. She's only going because she thinks you want to go. But she's been telling me all about this friend of hers, Janine, whose father's always taken her places like that. Dad, Janine's parents are divorced. He's a weekend father. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and she doesn't want you to be like that. <sighs> well, what'll I do? You go back to normal. She knows normal. She likes normal. Right, so I don't have to take her to all those places? No. Oh, thank God for that. That's a relief. <laughs> you know, all those rides at Wonderland, they make me sick. <laughs> Dad, you shouldn't go on them. I didn't. I was watching her on them and they made me sick. Oh, Betty, you're still here. Good. Yeah, I was just about to leave. Well, we wanted to see you. Yeah, um, you were right, Betty. 
Oh, I was? Oh, good. What about? About the nasty cards. About the curse of the nudges. The curse of the nudges? Yeah, it's been in Nudge's family for centuries. Yeah, we've all had it. Well, it's the way you weed, isn't it? I could have told you that. You know about the curse of the nudges? Well, it's a bit hard to keep it a secret. What? Wind. <laughs> Hi, Jen. What are you up to? Nothing, Dad. Good. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You don't want to go somewhere? No, no. I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. We can do nothing together, eh? Is it all right with you if I do my own nothing? Yes. I'll do my nothing, and you do your nothing. Okay. You know what Janine said today? She said her mother's going to let her get her ears pierced. Pardon? I was talking about Janine. Oh, well, you've been a bit silent lately. It's nice to have you talking to me again. I was talking to Barbie. Oh. I'll talk to you if you like. No, it's all right. You keep talking to Barbie. I've got my book to read. So I said to her, you can't do that. You look like some kind of hussy with your ears pierced. You said you think so? The show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network. Okay, give us a kiss before you go. Hang on, Jenny, you can't go like that. How am I supposed to go on my hands and knees? <laughs> no, you can't go on just a shirt. It's cold out there. You'll catch pneumonia. I'm not cold. Well, that's because you're in the house. As soon as you leave the house, the temperature will drop. That's right, Jen. Dad knows about all this stuff because he's an architect. <laughs> that's right. The first thing you learn. Houses should be warm on the inside. Now, young lady, where's your jumper? I don't know. I must have lost it. Well, where'd you lose it? Dad? Yes, Deb? Did you ever consider the fact that if she knew where she lost it, it wouldn't be lost? Deborah, I can do without your devastating logic at this time of day. Ah, it's for you. Why do you say that? Well, it's always for you. Whenever the phone rings, it's a foregone conclusion that it's for you. Oh, Dad, that's really silly. I mean, it really annoys me. Every time the phone rings, you say that'll be for you, and it's not always for me. Answer the phone. <laughs> OK, it won't be for me. Hello? Oh, hi, Tip. <laughs> Go now. No, that's not your jumper. But it's warm. Jenny, you know if you don't wear your uniform, you'll get into trouble. No, I won't. And why not? Because I'm going to take it off as soon as I get outside. <laughs> no, you're not. You're going to wear it. But then I'll get into trouble. Well, you shouldn't have lost your jumper in the first place. I didn't do it on purpose. You'll have to buy me a new one. No, I won't. Well, somebody's going to have to. <laughs> well, you can buy it yourself. Oh, you've got hundreds. Where? In your bank account. You've been hoarding it ever since you were three. But that's my money. <laughs> Tough. Either find your jumper or you'll have to buy yourself a new one. See you later, Dad. Yeah, see you later, Mr. Kelly. Simon isn't wearing a jumper. That's because Simon's 18, and when you reach 18, you're past the pneumonia stage. <laughs> and Nudge isn't either. Yes, well, he can stay warm on his body fat. <laughs> Oh, can you guys keep it down a little, please? I'm trying to talk to Tiff. No, you're not. You're listening. You haven't said a word so far. Well, it's my turn to talk now. Well, I'll take the phone into the kitchen. Hang on, Tiff. World War III's broken out here. <laughs> I'm just going to go somewhere a little quieter. 
Now, uh, where were we? Dad, can I go now? Yes, all right, and keep that on. No, wait, hang on, wait a minute. I didn't check your homework last night. It's good. Yes, of course it is. Uh, what about the night before? That was nice, Dad. It was okay. Oh, right. How many did you get right? Ten. Ten out of ten. You can't do better than that. Well, was it ten out of ten? Almost. Yes, well, how much almost? Ten out of thirty. I beg your pardon? Ten out of thirty. Oh, Jenny, that's <laughs> terrible. Better than I ever got. <laughs> Look, Jenny, I want to see your homework every night, okay? Yes, Dad. All right, off you go. See you later, Dad. Don't worry about dinner. We're going out. Oh, with whom? I'm taking Cheryl. And I'm taking Gina. Gina? I thought her father split you up. No, he's seen the error of his ways. Well, he didn't mind Nudge and Gina going out, Dad. He just didn't want Nudge hanging around the pizza parlor. Yeah, but we've come to a compromise. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm allowed in as long as I wear a muzzle. <laughs> Copy my hands, see? Eh? It's good, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I suppose we could do with an extra hand around the place. <laughs> That's very good, Mr. Kelly. So it is. Tell me, Betty, why are you photocopying your hand? Oh, uh, because I didn't want to get ink on it. Fine. Next question. Why do you need a copy of your hand? Oh, to send to Madame Zelda. You know, Betty, I could stay here asking you questions and get part of the answer for the rest of the day, but I'm not going to. Aren't you? No. Because you are now going to tell me the full story about the photocopier, your hand, and Madame Zelda. She's on the back of Australasian posts. Is yeah? oh. <laughs> that Madame Zelda? No. That's the ad for the Starlet Uplift Bra. That's Madame Zelda. <laughs> she does palm readers. You're supposed to send her an ink print of your hand, but I think that's cleaner. What do you think? <gasps> oh, look, my lifeline's all blocked. Yeah, and your brain line's dropped off. <laughs> I wonder when that happened. Shortly after you were born, I'd say. <laughs> I better make another print. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go sticking your hand in the photocopier. Why not? Oh, I don't know, but anything that's got a flashing light that needs a lid on it can't be doing you too much good. Oh, you mean it's not safe? Well, yeah, yeah, it's safe. Oh, well, you mean like x-rays? Well, yeah. Well, no. It's just, look, I don't... Don't do it, all right? Oh, oh like a microwave thingy? Mm, yeah, kind of. You mean my hand might be cooking from the inside out right now? <laughs> Of course it's not. Just don't do it. What are you trying to shield me from? Nothing. Oh, I know there's something bad's going to happen. My hand's going to drop off, isn't it? I can feel it's looser already. Oh, <laughs> Betty, your hand is not going to drop off. Look, I don't know what... Betty, it's just not a good... Look, just don't do it, OK? OK. Hey, Dad, can I see you for a minute? Mm, uh, yeah, OK, let's go and talk in there. OK. Why? Because this office is full of confusing vibrations, crazy ideas, and totally ridiculous thoughts. <laughs> now, uh, what did you want? I want to go to Paris. I think I'd rather be in here. But, Dad, hang on a minute. Oh, don't, don't, you, don't you dare. I know my daughter wants to see me. I do not wish to see her. Dad! I do not see you. Dad, you haven't even thought about it. I'm not going to think about it. It doesn't bear thinking about. But, oh, typical. Every time I come up with an idea that's slightly out of the ordinary, you just refuse to consider it. Slightly out of the ordinary. Deborah, do you realise that Paris is 14,000 miles out of the ordinary? They don't even speak English there. That's how unordinary they are. And, and they eat frogs. Be quiet. And they eat frogs. Dad, just calm down a minute. Look, Deborah, your waltz in here out of the blue. It's out and there. This... All right, your waltz out there out of the blue and say, can I go to Paris? What do you expect me to say? Yes? Yes. No. No. Yes. Which yes and which no are we on? I'm confused. Betty, we are not on any yes, we are on no, and we're staying there. Listen, what brought on this ridiculous idea anyway? Look, I was talking to Tiff this morning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, do you mind? I'm quite capable of going uh -huh all by myself. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was just trying to help very well. Then I was stopped. Right. Now, I don't suppose by any weird freak of chance that Tiff is going to Paris, too? Well, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, shut up. Dad, look, I'm serious. Yes, so am I. You are not going to Paris. Why not? Listen, are you going to follow me everywhere I go? Yes, until you give me a reason why. Dad, give me one good reason. Deborah, you're too young, you're in the middle of your art course, and we can't afford it. Pick whichever one you like. They're all good reasons. Minor technicalities. <laughs> OK, try this. If anyone around here goes to Paris, it's going to be me. And I'm not going, so you're not going. But, Dad, I'm an artist. 
Deborah, you're an idiot. <laughs> but Paris is the centre of the art world. I mean, think of the experience. Deborah, you're not an artist yet. You're still a student. Well, what better place to learn? I'll tell you a better place to learn. Chats with Tech. <laughs> but Tiffany's mother's letting her go. She's staying with friends. Well, that's between Tiffany and her mother. Besides, have they invited you to stay with the friends? Well, no. But I could get a flat. <sighs> Look, Debbie, you're too young. And it would cost thousands of dollars. We can't afford it. Dad, I'm not asking you to give me the money. It's a loan. That's all. I'll pay you back. All right. When's Tiff going? In a month. Well, OK. If you can raise the money in a month, you can go with Tiff. Well, how am I supposed to do that? It's ridiculous. Yes, it matches your idea. <laughs> oh, thanks, Betty. Oh, could you copy this for me, please? On the copier. Yes, on the copier. How else would you make a copy? Uh, you want me to use the copier? Yes, of course I do. It would take you days to copy it by hand. Oh, all right. Betty, I'll finish, I'll finish this one. You can copy this too, please. Oh, you better give that one to me, then I'll do Betty, it. Betty, stop mumbling. <laughs> what are you doing, woman? Oh, I'm using the copier. Oh, for goodness sake, take that thing off and make a copy of this, will you? Oh, now, hang on, look. You get the front door, I'll make a copy of this. <laughs> Ridiculous, wearing a welder's mask to use the photocopy. I mean, it's not, not as if it's a nuclear device. <laughs> Oh, good. What is it? Oh, it's Jenny's desk. I ordered it yesterday. Jenny's desk? Yeah. Mm. I thought it might give her a bit more incentive to do her homework. Mm. It was really cheap. It was in the paper. Oh, how much? Oh, 50 bucks. That's a lot for a newspaper. <laughs> Betty, put your head back in the bucket. <laughs> it was a really good deal. I mean, usually these things are about 300 bucks. Oh. See, it was designed in Sweden and made in Sweden. How come we got... Oh. How come you got it so cheap? I don't know. Yes, I do. All the assembly instructions are in Swedish. <laughs> hey, Dad, have you finished my desk yet? Yes, nearly. How far have you got? Well, so far I've managed to get it out of the pack. <laughs> Dad, I need it for my homework. Look, Jenny, I'm going as fast as I can, but all the assembly instructions are in Swedish. Hey, Dad, how's it going? Yeah, Mr Kelly, got the desk assembled yet? He's got it out of the pack. A big deal. Jenny? Dad, I can't do my homework without it, and if I don't do my homework, I'll get into big, big trouble, and it'll all be your fault. Yes, of course it'll be my fault. Well, what's the problem, Mr Kelly? Well, look, Nudge, the problem is all the assembly instructions are in Swedish. Well, give us a look, then. <laughs> Nudge, I don't know how to tell you this, but you don't speak Swedish. Mr Kelly, it's simply a matter of common sense and logic, that's all. Nudge, you don't speak common sense or logic, either. <laughs> He's good at things like this. He's good with his hands. He'll probably work it out. Well, easy. Is it? Yeah, as I read it, all you have to do is connect the horse fart to the Yarnsbockum. <laughs> oh, is that all? Just a minute. What on earth is a Yarnsbockum? Well, I don't know. I don't see anything that looks like a Yarnsbockum here. <laughs> Isn't that typical? They forgot to pack the Yarnsbockum. <laughs> do you have any idea what a Yarnsbockum looks like? No. Didn't put any pictures on it. Um, but I'll give you a hint. There are two dots above the O. Oh, that's an omelette. All right, we'll connect it to the omelette then. <laughs> Dad, what about my homework? Oh, uh, what is it? English. English? Well, what use is English? Why don't they teach you something useful, like Swedish? <laughs> what are you doing now? I'm looking for those two dots. Maybe we should join them together. <laughs> I should never have bought that desk in the first place. Hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Dad. Oh, you don't happen to speak Swedish, do you? <laughs> Not that I remember. Uh, listen, have you thought any further about my idea? What idea? Paris. No. Oh, but Tiff's going. Well, that's probably because Tiff's parents can afford it. I can't. Oh, well, a nice idea while it lasted. What do you got there? Oh, just one of those scratch lottery tickets. Oh, you've got money to waste on them, have you? No, I found outside the shops. Maybe I can win my fare to Paris. <laughs> well, don't hold your breath. Nobody ever wins anything with those things. No, you're right. I thought I just won $5,000. Yeah, well, it's always the way. You scratch the first two, but you never get the last one. Mm, you need four, don't you? No, three. Three? Yeah, three. I got three. <laughs> Bad luck. You got three? Yeah. You, you've got three $5,000? Yeah, is that good? 
Jibbery, you've just won $5,000. That's not good. That's incredible. <laughs> Now a rainbow's going to land on your head and $50 notes are going to come out of the sky. I don't believe it. Oh, do I? $5,000? That this solves everything. Well, not everything, but at least it's better than a poke in the eye with a burnt stick. No, 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 no. I mean, I can go to Paris now. Oh, look, Deborah, no. But you said if I could raise the money, I could go. I didn't mean that. But you said it. Dad, I've got the money now. I'm going. You can't stop me. Deborah, you're underage and you need my permission to leave the country and I'm not going to give it to you. Dad, if you do this to me, I will never forgive you. Deborah, if you make me do this to you, I will never forgive you. Don't make me do it. Dad, I'm going. Deborah. Debbie. Hi, Mr. Kelly. No. Yes, Nudge. I think we've got it together now. Do you want to have a look? Oh, oh why not? Make a change. There's something going right around you. <laughs> oh, mind you, there are a few minor details we may have not totally got right, but, you know. <laughs> a few minor details. Well, I said it's not perfect. A few minor details. Well, it's modern design, Dad. It's uh, supposed to look this way. <laughs> How am I expected to work at this? I'm going to be in big, big trouble now. It's all your fault, Nudge. Well, I was only trying to help. Yes, Jenny. Nudge did his best. Yeah, it's not my fault if we got the horse felt messed up with the yarns. <laughs> Dad, why can't I have Simon's desk? Well, hang on. What will I use? You can have this one. It's modern design. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but those Swedish instructions are pretty tricky. Oh, well, Nudge, you did your best. Anyway, I've always had my doubts about the Swedes, you know. How do you mean? Well, why would they name an entire race of people after the world's most boring vegetable? <laughs> hey, Dad, have you got a minute? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just hang on a tick. I've almost got this together now. Yeah. Oh! Damn it! I mean, why won't, why won't these two pieces fit together? Do you know, I have been working for months on this idiotic Duesenberg and I have yet to find two pieces that fit together. I mean, that's not too much to ask, is it? Just two pieces, that's all. Uh, why do you keep on with it? Because at least the instructions aren't in Swedish and it soothes my nerves. It does? Yes. Damn stupid thing. Can't you see how soothed I am? <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you want? Uh, I was thinking about Deb, Dad. Uh... By the way, where is she? Oh, she, she rang in a few hours ago to say that she was going to a party with Tiff. Her exact words were, I'm going to a party with Tiff, don't wait up for me, au revoir. <laughs> au revoir? French. She's still mad at you? Yes, she could say that. You know, Dad, uh, maybe you're being a bit hard on her. I haven't started yet. I'll give her au revoir when she gets home. But this trip to Paris might be a good thing for her, and it wouldn't cost you anything to see them now. But Simon, she is still too young to go off to Paris by herself. Well, yeah, I suppose so. Be a great experience, though. True. I mean, all the really great art galleries are there, aren't they? The Louvre, the, the Tuileries, and the Bastille. Simon, the Bastille is not an art gallery. It's a falling down old prison. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Still, it'd be an inspiration, wouldn't it? Yes, but she's still too young. Yeah, I suppose so. What if there's someone old with her? You know, to sort of look after her. Someone older? Yeah. How much older? Well, I don't know. You wouldn't want him too old. Uh, a year, maybe two. Someone round about your age, say? Yeah! <laughs> hey, Dad, I didn't mean me. Oh, no, of course not. You were talking about Nudge, weren't you? <laughs> now that you mention it, I wouldn't mind doing the kid a favour. I mean, that'd help her out, wouldn't it? Oh, Simon, you, you mean you'd give up your job to go to rotten old boring Paris just to look after your little sister? Well, it's the least I could do. She's not a bad kid. <laughs> yes, and tell me, Simon, who'd pay for the trip? I mean, you've got a scratch lottery ticket in your handbag, too. Eh? Well, you'd have to pay for the moment, but I'd pay you back. Forget it. Don't want to think about it a little? I don't want to think about it a lot. <laughs> Simon. Yes, Dad. Nice try. Hello, Martin Kelly speaking. What? What? Is she all right? Oh, thank God for that. What is it? No, are you sure she's all right? Well, uh, what about the other girl? What? I see. Thank you, Sergeant. Yes. Yes, I'll be down right away. Dad, what is it? Is it dead? She was driving Tiff's car home from the party. What, the Salika? Yes, and she's crashed into another car. Oh, my God. Is she all right? Yes, she's all right. Nobody's injured, but both cars are pretty badly damaged. Well, Dad, why did the police ring you? Why didn't Deb ring? They've arrested her, Simon. She's been breathalyzed. She's been drinking. Oh, my God. Are you all right, Jeff? I'm okay. All right, Deborah. I'm listening. Dad, I told you I wasn't drinking. I've had nothing but orange juice all night. Deborah, orange juice does not give you a positive reading on the breathalyzer. Don't you believe me? You tell him I don't...
don't even like drink. Dad, she's right. She, she never drinks. Simon, stay out of this, please. Look, Deborah, you storm out of here in a rage, and then the, the police ring me up and, and, and tell me you've been drinking. What do you expect me to think? I expect you to think I'm telling the truth. Dad, I wouldn't lie to you about a thing like this, honestly. Look, Deborah, you failed the breathalyzer and you failed the blood test. Now, how could that happen if you haven't been drinking? I don't know. Look, maybe someone spiked my drink. Oh, somebody spiked your drink. Who would do a stupid thing like that? Dad, some of the kids think that's a funny thing to do. They know Debbie doesn't drink and they might think it's a funny thing to get her drunk. I wasn't drunk. You don't have to be drunk. You're still on pee plates. Any alcohol and you're gone. You mean I'll lose my licence? It's not fair. Look, Deborah, it's a little worse than losing your licence if you've been drinking. Dad! All right, all right. Look, if the police say you've been drinking, then Tiff's insurance will not cover the accident. Oh, my God, I hadn't thought of that. You mean... I mean, we'll have to pay for it. Oh, Dad. Look, come on, Deb, now. Look, it's been a rough night. We'll, we'll worry about this in the morning. Come on. Dad? Yes, Deb. I wasn't drinking. Do you believe me or not? Dad? Yes, I believe you. Oh, Mr. Kelly. Yes, Betty. Can you step this way, please? I have something to show you. Listen, Betty, what have you been doing for the past hour? Now, close your eyes. It's a surprise. And come with me. And there. Now tell me what you think. I think you haven't told me I can open my eyes. Oh, oh, sorry, silly me. Open your eyes. Ah! <laughs> Betty! <laughs> you... You've done it. You've connected the horse bargles and yarn balkums together. I have? Yes. Oh. Horst Vargas and Young Berkums. Are they Swedish tennis players? Never mind that. How did you manage this? Oh, well, as my father always used to say, girly, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It is? Yeah, because you don't know what, but you do know who, and who knows what. So, who can tell you what, then you know too. You know? Uh, yes, and uh, who exactly do you know, Betty? Well, Helga, of course. She translated the instructions for me. Oh, Betty, that's brilliant thinking. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd say that. <laughs> it was nothing. It's really good, though, isn't it, Bud? It's marvellous, though, Bud. Look, you rest here and I'll make some coffee. You've earned it. <sighs> ah, how'd it go? Uh, I told his mother I'd pay for the damage. It's gonna be a couple of grand. Oh, well, easy come, easy go. Yes, well, I'm sorry, Deb. Oh, look, no, it's only fair that I paid out. I mean, I wasn't drinking, but I was still really angry, and I shouldn't have been driving in that condition. Mm, fair enough, I suppose. Hey, Dad, uh, we did a bit of checking, and uh, two of my mates admitted that they'd sparked Debbie's drinks. Look, they're really sorry. Oh, well, that's marvellous, isn't it? She could have been killed because of their stupidity. <laughs> well, they feel really bad about it. They didn't think Deb was driving because she arrived in Tiff's car. Idiots. Well, and they said they'd testify when Deb's case came up. So, she probably won't lose her licence. Well, that's something. By the way, Dad, thanks for believing me before Simon found this out. Oh, well, oh, that, that's all right. Anyway, you know, I think some good has come out of all this. What do you mean? Well, you actually had the money to go to Paris, but there was no way I was going to let you go. And if all this hadn't happened, well, you might have ended up hating me. Dad, I may have been angry with you. I may have even been furious, but there's no way on earth I could ever hate you. Oh, oh, gee, I'm getting on so bad. Now here, Mike would hate. <laughs> recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network.
Oh, Jenny, what are you doing? Well, I just wanted to watch your cartoons, Dad. Well, I've told you, haven't I? No breakfast in the living room. Yes, Dad. Anyway, it's not cartoons, that's the business show. Well, I don't know why they bother with it. What do you mean? Well, I've been watching for ten minutes and I haven't laughed once. <laughs> yes, well, business shows are not renowned for their rollicking good humour. Take your plate to the kitchen, please. But I'm waiting to see the bears. I bet they'll be funny. What bears? They keep talking about Dow Jones and the bears and the bulls, and I'm waiting to see them. Oh. <laughs> Look, that's all business talk. You know, Dow Jones, the bears and the bulls, it's all business talk. Well, who is Dow Jones anyway? Is he someone like Michael Jackson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be about right. Now, come on. Morning, Nudge. Good morning, Mr Kelly. Morning, Nudge. Hey, Jim, what happened to the cartoons? I was waiting for someone to say, Seize him! <laughs> right, when they say that. Now, it's some silly business show with Dow Jones in the indexes. Yeah, yeah, a rock and roll group, aren't they? <laughs> it's the business show, Nudge. Oh. And it's not funny. Oh, well, there's no business like business show. <laughs> Well, yeah, never mind, dear. Am I too young? No, it just wasn't funny. <laughs> well, I thought it was good. Nudge, what are you doing? It's the Kelly, I'm making sandwiches. It's a long, hard day working at the golf course. What? Are you making them for everyone? No, just me. <laughs> You've got four stacks here. Well, Mr Kelly, this is morning play lunch, this is lunch, and this is afternoon play lunch. What? Now, that's Simon's, is it? Now, that's in case I get hungry. How could you possibly get hungry with all this lot? Mr Kelly, you have to understand, these three are fuel. And this lot is food. Oh, I get it. I beg your pardon? No, just joke. There's no business like business show. I get it now. Oh, oh good. You're right, Dad. It wasn't funny. Morning, Dad. Morning, Dad. Uh, hi, kids. Here, Dad, sign this. Oh, uh, all right. Just a minute, what is it? It's your pledge. My pledge? Yeah, for the famine. Oh, <laughs> Deborah, Simon, I look around this kitchen and I see no famine. No, you didn't have to make my lunch. I oh, know, I didn't. <laughs> no, they're all for nudge, Simon. Well, why are you making them here? Why didn't you make them in your place? Well, because I checked in the bread bin and there was no bread. Why not? Because I ate it all. <laughs> so, so I had to come over here to make my peanut butter and marmalade sandwiches. Peanut butter and marmalade? Well, you're all out of honey. Jeez, you mob can eat. <laughs> no, Joe, uh, these aren't all peanut butter and marmalade, are they? No, these are the good ones. They've got pickle on them as well. <laughs> Makes a famine sound attractive. Listen, what is this famine you're burbling on about? The council's organising a famine. Yeah? What are they going to do? Burn down the greengrocers? No, Dad, it's a 48-hour famine to aid the village of Pelago. We're trying to raise money for their new school. Pelago? Sounds more like a shirt than a village. <laughs> It's in Italy, just outside of Florence. You see, we're going on a famine and we get sponsors to pay for every hour we don't eat. Oh, yeah? Well, who's on this famine? Me. Me? Me? <laughs> <laughs> you? Yeah. Ha! Me? Dutch, no, you not eating is like a homing pigeon hitchhiking. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's, you couldn't go without food for 48 seconds, let alone 48 hours. Of course I could. Look, it's for a good cause and it's just a matter of willpower. Ha! Yeah, you want to bet? Yeah, Dad, put your money where your heart is. Well, I'd be pleased to. <laughs> oh, how about five bucks an hour? Well, why not make it ten? I won't have to pay up. But you have to go the full distance. Well, you'll ha on the other side of your face when you have to pay me $480. Ha! Double. Ha! <laughs> well, well, i better make some more sandwiches. More sandwiches? Yeah, I've got to stock up. Haven't you heard? There's a famine coming. <laughs> Okay. Hey, just a minute. You're a bit late, aren't you? No, we've got an excursion. An excursion? Yeah, the bus isn't coming till 10, so we don't have to be early. Just, look, this is the third excursion you've been on this last week. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> you never spend any time at school. Listen, where's this one going? I don't know. I just get on the bus and it takes us places. <laughs> you mean to say your school is doing mystery tours these days? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, you know what's going to happen? One day you're going to get on the bus and it'll take you straight to school. Oh, that's not fair. Anyway, listen, you better get going or you'll be late, even for your late start. OK, can I have some money? What do you want money for? <laughs> for the excursion. Of course, for the excursion. Right, uh, now, let's see. How much would you like? Five bucks. OK, five bucks. There you go. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Dad. Yes, Jen? You know how it's my birthday this week? Oh, yes. I seem to remember something about that. Have you got me a present yet? No, not yet. Do you want something special or would you like a surprise? A surprise. Okay, a surprise it is. Good. Can I have a horse? <laughs> Jenny, that won't be a surprise. Yes, it 
will because you always say I can't have one. And I still say you can't have one. Jennifer, you've been asking me for a horse for the last eight years. I keep saying no and you keep asking. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, you've tried, try it again. Now give up. Okay, off you go. Okay, you sure about the horse? I'm sure about the horse and enjoy your excursion. Hi, Betty. I can't have a horse again. Oh, never mind, darling. You just keep trying. Betty? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, it doesn't hurt for a girl to have her dreams, only I'm sorry I'm late. Why? Because you've been on an excursion? No, I've been talking to Helga. Oh, how is Helga? Oh, poor thing. She pulled a tendon. Where? In the street. Oh. <laughs> poor, poor Helga. i better go and rub it better for her. Where is she? She's gone and stopped that at once. Oh, well, a man's entitled to his dreams as well. Anyway, she gave me these. Oh, thanks. Oh, this one's for you. Oh, is it? Oh, I love getting letters. I used to get one every month in Walgett. Oh, I used to look forward to it so much. Yeah? Who was it from? Me. <laughs> you used to write to yourself every month? Yeah. I missed out once and I got really cranky with myself. I waited for it for days and it never turned up. Betty, why did you write to yourself? Oh, because no one else would. I wanted an overseas pen pal, but I couldn't afford the stamps. Uh, well, what did you write? I used to write, write jokes in that. <laughs> and I knew most of them already. Well, did you write that one? Don't think so. Oh, it's from Mum. Oh, well, I'll let you read it in private. I'll go and make some coffee. See you later, Dad. See you, boys. Hey, Mr. Kelly. Simon, Nudge, come here, please. What is it, Dad? That is what I would like to know. What is it? It's a chain, Dad. Oh, thank you, Simon. Now, why is it wrapped around my fridge? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yes, Nudge, it's very good. Now, why is it wrapped around my fridge? Nudge put it there. Somehow I could have guessed that. Yeah, it's my, it's my famine breaking prevention device, Mark II. Well, what happened to Mark I? It was this. But we decided it wouldn't work. He could never break that. Dad, he could chew it. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Well, give me the key. Mr. Kelly, what is the point of me locking the fridge if I'm going to carry the key around with me? Well, where is it? In a safe place. He swallowed it, hasn't he? He swallowed it. No well, way, Dad. He was going to, but then he realised he'd be breaking the famine. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to play to your cunning hands, so I mailed it to myself. You mailed the key to my fridge to yourself? Yeah, I mailed it priority paid, so it probably won't be back for a week. Oh, terrific. Now I can't get into my own fridge. Mr Kelly, that's the idea. Welcome to the famine, Dad. I am not on the famine. You are now. See that? No, just, what? Well, I'll speak to you about this later, Simon. It's bad news, Mr. Kelly. Yes, I know, Betty. It'll take bolt cutters to get this open. No, I might have to go back to Walgett. Well, it's not that bad. I'll get it open this afternoon. There's no need for you to go flouncing back to Walgett just because we can't have milk with our coffee. No, no, it's my father. Your father? What about him? Well, he hasn't been well lately. He's been getting these pains in the chest. Chest pains? Gee, Betty, that could be serious. Yeah, Mum's really worried that he's had a heart attack and he's not saying anything. And he gets these pains and, and, and then his vision goes all blurry. Well, has he seen a doctor? No, just blurry things. <laughs> Betty, Betty, has he talked to a doctor? Oh, yeah, he saw Dr Price. Well, what did he say? Well, he said not to worry that it was probably just stress and overwork. Well, there you go, then. Yeah, but, but Mum doesn't trust Dr Price. She reckons he wouldn't know if his head was on fire until he went to put his hat on. Yeah? yeah. Mum says she wouldn't trust Dr Price to treat the dogs. Why not? Because he's not a vet. <laughs> My mum's not that crazy. <laughs> Look, Betty, I think you should ring your mother and have a talk to her. Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, well, I think maybe you should. Yeah, maybe, ma maybe I will. Well, maybe you should. Yeah, do you think I should? Yes! <laughs> Ring her! Oh, honey, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr Kelly, but I had to do some thinking, so I went for a walk and I shouldn't have done that. Why not? Well, because I had to stop walking to think, and then I had to stop thinking to walk, and then I forgot what I was thinking. <laughs> And, and so that, then I had to stop again, and, and that made me really slow, and that's why I'm late. Oh, well, thank God you weren't chewing gum at the same time, otherwise you never would have got here. <laughs> but never mind, I understand. Now listen, did you ring Walgett? Yeah, yeah, I spoke to Dr Price. Right, what did he say? Well, he said it wasn't a heart attack, but the Dad was working too hard and he'd have to ease up a little. Well, that's okay then. Yeah, but I don't know, Mr Kelly. I mean, Dad's one of them workomaniacs. No, no, workaholic. No, he doesn't drink. <laughs> 
he's too busy working. <laughs> now, Mr. Kelly, I think I'll have to go back to, to the farm in Walgett and help out. Well, Betty, if you think you have to. But surely your mum can help. Oh, mum, she uses us on the farm. She's great in the kitchen, but she knows nothing about farming and she panics. What do you mean she panics? Well, every year when Dad plants a week, she follows the tractor and says, it isn't growing yet. And, and we tell her it takes months, but she stays up all night with a torch watching it grow. And then she, she, she's worn out the next day and she has a panic attack because it's still not growing and then she has go and have a lie down. Oh, I see. But by the time harvest arrives, she, 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 she's a nervous wreck. Well, well, Betty, if you feel you have to go, I suppose you must, but I'll miss you. Oh, Mr. Kelly, will you? Yes, I will. Oh, oh that makes me feel really wonderful. Well, uh, yeah, well Betty, could, could you stop feeling wonderful all over my shirt, please? <laughs> my word, what's going on here? Oh, Stan. Stan! What exactly is going on here? A man could think he's arrived just in time. My word, he could. Now, look, Stan, calm down. I'm just comforting Betty, that's all. I could see that. My word, I could. Look, she's, she's upset because she has to go back to Walgett. Oh, yeah? Well, I have to go back to Walgett, but you don't find me doing a sookie all over your shirt front. Stan? Yes, Elizabeth? Down. Yes, Elizabeth. Stanley, you will just have to learn to curb this insane jealousy of yours. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you doing here, anyway? Well, look, I came to tell you about your father. Oh, look, I know about that. Mum told me. That's why I'm going back to Walgett. And that's why she's so upset. Oh, oh, is that all? Oh, my God, Father, you're a giddy girt girl. <laughs> look, of course you don't have to go back to Walgett. I don't? No, that's what I came to tell you. Oh, but Mum says it... Oh, uh -huh. yeah, well, we all know about your mother, don't we? What about a mother? Martin, she panics at the drop of a hat. She does not panic at the drop of a hat. Elizabeth, she is known all over Walgett as Panicky Paula. <laughs> Panicky Paula? Yeah. Well, look, when she heard the Japanese had raided Sydney Harbour, she rushed outside and built an air raid shelter. Well, well, a lot of people did that during the war. This was last year. <laughs> she, found, she found an old newspaper under the liner. Yeah, well, maybe she panics a, a little, little bit, but, but Dr. Price said Look, that... I know what Dr. Price said, and that's what I've come to tell you. You don't have to worry. I'm helping out on your father's property. I've got old Jack over there three days a week. Oh, Stanley! Oh, oh. Are you oh, now, 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 oh. girlie, don't do another sookie. <laughs> I've only got one clean shirt. I've got, I've got a cup of tea. Stan, you're terrific. Oh, geez, you're not going to cry in my shirt too, are you? <laughs> no, but the least I can do is put you up for the night. Oh, oh, well, that's very civil of you, Martin. Oh, mind you, I've got old Ben with me. Old Ben? Oh, yeah. take a seat. Oh, ta. Yeah, old Ben, he, he likes to run in the car and he doesn't get to the city much. Oh, you got old Ben with you. How is he? Oh, he's good. Yeah. He has his leg. Oh, it's on the mend. It still troubles him a bit in the cold weather, but... Listen, Stan, where is he? Oh, I left him out in the backyard. Well, Stan, ask him in. Oh, no, no. Old Ben doesn't go much on houses. Oh, real old-time bushy, eh? Yeah, yeah. Born and bred. Yeah. Well, at least we can give him a cup of tea. Uh, no, no. I'll just fill a bucket of water for him. <laughs> water? Yeah, what else would you feed a horse? Can I tell where the bucket is? There's a horse in my backyard. Dad, Dad, thank you, thank you. Jimmy, Jimmy. What for? What for? And listen, why aren't you at school? And I haven't even had a chance to wrap him. Now, Jenny, you do understand the horse is not yours. Yes, Dad. Good. Look, I'm sorry if you're disappointed, but you wouldn't want to take away Stan's oldest friend. No, Dad. After all, you know, Ben and I have been together ever since we were foals. Uh, pups. Not children. I understand. Good girl. Now, Stan, how does a beer sound? Oh, sort of... Psh. <laughs> It is. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, well, you think about it. Let's right. go, Stan. <laughs> right out. Let's get a beer. Oh, my word. That's a good idea. I mean, food costs a bob or two these days, doesn't it? I must get one of these. Right out. Stand back. Oh, it'd be easier with a key, Martin. Yeah, well, nudge just hidden the key. Oh, well, no need for that. Oh. Stan, how'd you do that? Oh, with the hoof reamer. Oh, 
tell me, I've always wondered, what do you use a hoofrema for? For opening padlocks. <laughs> I said that. City people lead a racy life, don't you? Hey, Dad, if I can't have a horse, can I have a party? Well, that sounds reasonable. Why not? Who'd you like to ask? This is family. Okay, that's nice. We'll have a nice party for the family. Yeah, and we'll have sausage rolls and pizza slices and little Willy Frankfurts and fairy bread and everything. Yeah. Hey, listen, <laughs> if we're going to have all that, there's one extra person we should invite. You mean Stan? No, I mean Nudge. <laughs> The pizza, we got the fairy bread, we got the little Willy Frank. But... <laughs> this is really, really low. Yeah, it's a good hint. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be this sneaky. Oh, come on, Deb, it's party time. Lighten up, have a little Willy. <laughs> Peter stay on this famine once he sees all this. Have you no principles? Deborah, as I always say, it's not the principle, it's the money of the thing. <laughs> you remember the old saying. What old saying? If at first you don't succeed, cheat. Hi, <laughs> oh, Mr. Kelly. Nudge! Nudge! Help yourself! Nudge, don't look! It's too late, I came, I saw I hung it! Nudge, go this way! Now, now, children, don't go too far. Supper will be served in cinque minuti. We've got to do something. We've got to do something. What do you expect me to do? What do you expect him to do? I don't know. She doesn't know. Well, think of something. Well, think of something. Maybe you could hypnotise him. Maybe you could hypnotise me. How am I supposed to do that? I don't know. Uh, Maybe you can wave a watch in front of his face or something. Well, wait a minute. What's up? I've forgotten who I'm supposed to be talking to. Well, don't talk. Concentrate. Look at the watch. What do you see? You're five minutes slow. <laughs> Oh, hello, Gerald. What's going on? Oh, hello, Stan Flagpole. Huh? Trying to hypnotise me so I won't eat. Ah, oh, well, that's not the way you do it. Look, what you do is you, you draw a line and you put their nose on it and get them to concentrate. And then you say, do not eat, or whatever you want to say. Well, how do you know all this? I do it with the chooks. <laughs> Why do you want to hypnotise chooks? Oh, well, when they've got their noses down like that, it's easier to chop their heads off. Oh, chop their heads off? <laughs> yeah. Can we? My godfather, eh? Look at you, eh? <laughs> You're all gussied up and as flash as a rat with a gold tooth. Oh, Stan, you're oh. such a right man. <coughs> OK, it's party time. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Dad, this really isn't fair. I know. <laughs> see the food, Gerald? I see no food. Smell the food, Gerald? I smell that food. Oh, yes, you do. Mr. Kelly, I know what you're up to, but your subtle tricks won't work on me. I have Naritas willpower. Naritas willpower? <laughs> Go bag your head. <laughs> now, Jenny, what would you like to eat first? Um, green jelly. Green jelly for the birthday girl. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, Betty, blow it out your ear. Oh, dear. Now, Simon, Deb, can I tempt you? Uh, no, Dad, we're still on a famine. Nudge, what are you doing? You told me to go back my head, so I did. <laughs> Very funny. Now, put a sock in it. <laughs> what are you doing now? I'm putting a sock in the back of my head. Dad, he's doing everything you tell him. Let me have a go. Bark like a dog, Nudge. Uh -huh. Stan, Stan, he's hypnotised. You've hypnotised him. Oh, Stanley can do anything. <laughs> My godfather, I think you're right. Do you mean he'll do anything I tell him? Dad, don't you dare. Nudge, eat. I'm commanded not to eat. What do you mean? Ah, oh, well, the last words he heard before he went under were, do not eat. I'm commanded not to eat. Look, Stan, if he doesn't eat in the next half hour, I lose my bet. Now get him out of it. Well, I don't know how to. Well, what do you do when the chickens get like this? Normally, I chop off their heads. 
Nudge, have something to eat. Please, just a little bit. Look, the famine is over. You've got my money now. You, you can eat something now. I'm commanded not to eat. <laughs> no, it won't work, Martin. Well, doesn't anything ever wake up the chooks? Well, sometimes when I chop their heads off, they become quite lively for a little while. <laughs> it's a short life, but an active one. <laughs> well, we'll keep that for a last resort. Has Nudge eaten yet? I'm commanded not to eat. No, afraid not. Where have you been? I was brushing them. Oh, that reminds me, Jennifer. Look, seeing as how it's your birthday and seeing how Ben has taken to you the way he has... Oh, no, 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 Stan, what? Stan, you cannot give Ben to her. Yes, he can. Look, I thought she could have him when she comes to Walgett to visit. What a great idea. Terrific. When am I going to Walgett? Probably next week on a school excursion. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Dad. Your horse has ignition keys? Well, they're the keys to his stable, actually. Oh, I knew that. Has he eaten yet? I commanded not to eat. No, nah, look, we've tried everything. Pizza, sausage rolls and green jelly and fairy bread, everything. Not quite. Well, what else is there? Stan, an old incantation we city folk know. Ready? Go. Two all beef patties. Special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Pickles. Onions. Oh, the sesame seed bun! Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> The show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network. How's it going, Jen? Almost ready, Dad. Good. Okay, sir, you ready to order now? Well, yes, I certainly am. And what's on the menu this morning? Breakfast. Good. Well, what would you recommend? Breakfast. Fine, fine. Then I'll have the, um, breakfast. Thank you. Okay, sir, are you hungry? Hungry? You bet. Now, is it A, just hungry, B, really hungry, or C, unbelievably hungry? I'm so hungry, I could eat the moustache off George Negus' face. <laughs> That's D, disgustingly hungry. Thank you, sir. Hi, Jen. What are you doing? Making Dad breakfast. He keeps making these funny little noises. Sounds like he sprung a leak. Hi, <laughs> Dad. Oh, hi, Deb. Oh, I see anyone who's anyone is having breakfast at Jenny's Tuckeratorium. Dad, are you all right? Jen said you've been making funny little noises. Mm. Breakfast is served. What is that? <laughs> it's old style breakfast. We made it in school yesterday. What, in woodwork? <laughs> no, in history. But it was full of plastic people. That's right. In the olden days, I used to put all sorts of things in breakfast cereals. Yeah, like breakfast cereal. <laughs> this looks like the Kokoda Trail. <laughs> Look out, Sergeant Snap. It's Sultana's at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Dear Willikers, Corporal Crackle, this looks like weak term warfare. <coughs> oh, no, they got private pup. Coco to the rescue. Well, if you don't want it, I'll give it to Debbie. Uh -huh. No, thanks, Jen. I'm a pacifist. Nudge will eat it. Nudge will eat anything. No, look, I'll, I was only kidding, Jen. Look, this this is terrific. Look. Mm, 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 yum. Mm. What's this? The bill. 
Oh, dear. I seem to have forgotten my wallet. Well, it just seems you'll have to wash up. Bye, Daddy. We'll be late for school. Just... Oh, come on. Come on. Where are you? Please, be kind to me just this once. I mean, it's not too much to ask, is it? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Deb? Oh, Deb? What is it, Deb? Did Betty say anything to you about being late today? Uh, not that I remember. Well, where is she? Look, believe it or not, I, I need her in the office today. I, I've got four letters that need typing up and mailing today. Oh, don't worry, she'll be here. Yeah, but when? Gee, I hope the country hasn't switched over to EBT without telling me. EBT? Yeah, Eastern Betty time. <laughs> you know, you look at your watch, take, take away the number you first thought of, add last week's lotto results, and that's the time you come to work. Uh, Betty's very reliable. She's always late. Well, yeah, I mean, you can always rely on her being late. Mm, well, I hope nothing's happened to her. Ah, oh, she'll be all right. Yeah, well, I hope so, otherwise I'll never get those letters done. Ah. Oh. Well, that's probably her now. Yeah, well, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. No short change yourself. <laughs> Hello, Martin Kelly, architect. Uh, <laughs> architect. Oh, Betty, listen, I've just about had enough... What? What? With, with a what? What? When? Oh, that's terrible. Well, what is it, eh? Oh, I don't know. I can't understand a word she's saying. <laughs> listen, Betty, Betty, slow down, will you? Right, now start again. What? What? With a what? When? Oh, yes, that's terrible. Yes, all right. Yes, I'll see you later. Bye. Well, what did she say? Oh, well, she said, oh, Mr. Kelly, I hope I've got a in there. I don't know what that means. And then she said something about a robbery. She's been robbed? Well, no, I think it's a neighbour's. She's over there making them cups of tea. Oh, poor things. Yeah, have you tried Betty's tea? It's so powerful, the Navy are using it as shark repellent. No, is she taking the day off? No, 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 she said she'd be here in a couple of hours. But that still leaves me without a secretary. No. Yes. I'm your father, and daughters do what fathers tell them, particularly when they live under the same roof. But, uh, haven't I told you I'm allergic to typewriters? Oh, don't be silly. No, it's true. Last time I used a typewriter, I broke a nail. <laughs> I was lucky. It could have been an hour. Uh, in fact, I'm allergic to technology of any kind. Are you sure? Positive. Oh, good. From now on, all your phone calls can be done on the jungle drums. Dad! Say hello to the fan for me, will you? Oh, you finished those letters yet, Deb? Hang on, Dad. I'm an artist, not a typist. Yeah, well, neither's Betty, but I pay her good money to pretend she is. I think she does a good job. What, pretending to be a typist? Yeah, I'll agree with you then. Picasso couldn't type. And Van Gogh had a lot of trouble answering the phone. Dad. Oh, come on. It's only until Betty gets here. Stop complaining and do some work. Mush! Mush! Oh, it's like working for Nanook of the North Shore. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr Kelly. Oh, look, it's Paula Betty. <laughs> and you'll never guess what happened. Hang on. Mr Nanook, uh, Paula Betty's in the outer igloo to see you. You may go on through Oh, you did that very well. Thank you. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Oh, you will never guess what happened, Mr Kelly. Um, your neighbours were robbed. How did you know? You rang and told me. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Oh, gee, for a minute there, I thought you were piss chick. Piss chick? Dare I ask, what is piss chick? Oh, Mr. Kelly, you know, it's when you know that something's going to happen, and you know that when it happens, the spooky bit is that you knew it was going to happen before anyone else knew it was going to happen, because they didn't know it was going to happen, but you did, because you happened to be piss chick, you know? <laughs> That's psychic, Benny. What is, Mr. Kelly? I wish I could paint like you talk, Betty. I'd make blue poles look like a finger painter. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> Listen, um, anyway, are your neighbours all right? Oh, poor Jose and Josefina. Who? They're my neighbours. Well, actually, their names are Jose and Josefina, but where they come from in the Philippines, they were too poor to afford all the letters of the alphabet. <laughs> anyway... Poor Josefina came running in all upset. She said, Betty, Betty, I have been hogged. I have been hogged. Hogged? Yes, by the hobbers, Deb. Gotcha. Yeah. Listen, was much stolen? Oh, they took everything. The video, the television, the record player, her box set of Charles and Di Bicentennial souvenir salad servers. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, and her favourite. 
favourite flannelette naughty. The, the one with kiss me quick before I'm sick on it. Yes, well, if I see it, Betty, I'll let you know. Oh, it was awful. Yes, I'm sure it was. Dad, Betty's just had a very traumatic experience. Would you like a drink or something? Oh, I'd love a coffee, thanks, Deb. All those cups of tea made me really thirsty. I'll pretend I understood that. Anyway, listen, it really doesn't surprise me, you know. I mean, what do people expect if they don't take adequate security precautions? But they did. That they always leave Fang in the flat. What, Fang their dog? No, silly. Fang the goldfish. <laughs> right. So, whenever anyone breaks into the flat, Fang leaps out of his bowl and guppies them to death. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kelly, yuck. Oh, you made my dress all wet. But anyway, where are they now? They're in my flat, waiting for the police. Right. Are they going to lock up when they leave? No. May I ask why they're not going to lock up? Because I haven't got any locks. What? Not even a deadlock? Mr. Kelly, I'll have no need of deadlocks. I'll lock my hair the way it is. <laughs> I always leave the door open. Makes me feel like I'm at home in Walgett. Betty? Mr. Kelly, you may be confused by this veneer of urban sophistication you see before you, but may I remind you, my roots shall always remain in the country. Yes, well, your roots might be in the country, but I think someone's ring-barked your brain. <laughs> Oh, look, Betty, I don't believe this. Your neighbours have just been robbed by the Chatswood cat burglar and you leave your flat wide open. Yeah. So all and sundry can come in and take their pick from Betty's boudoir's bountiful booty. Mr Kelly, I would never let anyone bird my booty. I mean, I'd never be able to look Stan in the eyes again. I can never even look Stan in the eyes now. Besides, no one's going to break into my flat. Why not? They don't have to. The door's always open. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, sometimes I think you don't listen to a word I say. I do my best. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you very much, Deborah. Deb, do you know that, that Betty does not even have a deadlock on her flat? No deadlock? Betty, don't you think it'd be a good idea to get one? Oh, I'll be all right. Besides, I've got my crook cracker. Your what? My crook cracker. It stands our cricket bat. He gave it to me one rainy night under the water tower. He says it's patented. No, you mean patented. No, no, no. Patented is when your shoes are all shiny. Patented is when you're in the hospital. Oh. Anyway, so Stan was playing cricket one day and Clyde Purvis was fielding at really, 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 really silly short leg. What is really, 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 really silly short leg? He had a limp. <laughs> Mr Kelly, don't be silly. I've had a very traumatic morning. So anyway, he, he hit the ball really hard, Stan did, and got Clyde right in the LBWs. <laughs> he was patient in hospital for a week. Oh, right. Well, listen, that settles it. You're staying here tonight. Oh, but, but Mr. Kelly... No buts about it, Betty. Look, you can stay here tonight, and then we'll go over to your flat tomorrow morning, and we'll put a deadlock on your front door. But, 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 and what? that's final. Otherwise, look, I'd never be able to get any rest. You know, the thought of Betty Border out there cover driving some poor unsuspecting burglar all over Chatsman. <laughs> It's not that nuts, it just gets a bit boring sometimes. Oh, it's a good job. What, being a second assistant to the third assistant greenkeeper's apprentice? Uh, well, <laughs> pay's good. Well, only a dork with an IQ of a fence post would find it stimulating. Oh, well, I find it stimulating. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't mean you, Nudge. Uh, you're smarter than a fence post. Am I? Yeah, of course you are. You've got your HSC. So? Well, how many fence posts do you know that have got their HSC? Well, that's a point. <laughs> Man, it's just that I'm not getting any younger and... What have I done? What have I achieved? I reckon if my whole life flashed before my eyes, I'd get bored. Well, if my life flashed before my eyes, I'd get hungry. Before I know it, I'll be old and 20. Yeah, imagine, old and 20. I feel really sorry for people who grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, oh, Simon. Hi, oh, Natch. Uh, uh, sad, isn't it? Ain't you? Uh, well, listen, fellas, I'm going over to Betty's tomorrow morning to fit a deadlock to a door. I need a hand. Any volunteers? Yeah, we'll help, Dad. Yeah, yeah, shouldn't go lifting heavy things, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, take a seat, Dad. It's only a deadlock and a screwdriver. Oh, you can't be too careful at your age, Mr. Kelly. My Uncle Trevor died carrying a loaf of bread back from the shops. Yeah, what, what happened? <laughs> Truck went over him. <laughs> Nudge. Eh? Go home. Well, fair enough. Oh, I think he's getting older by the minute. It happens at his age. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, come on, let's get back to the golf course. I don't know, Nudge. I don't think I could stomach the sight of another mashy niblick. 
Yeah, nor could I. That segment's filled me right up. <laughs> Unless you nibble it as a golf club nudge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, come on, we're going to be late. I'm not going, Nudge. I'm oh. resigning. Well, you can't do that. It's air beaters arvo. Oh, that's all I need, old lady golfers. No, it's a special tournament, Mother and Daughter's Day. Yeah, and believe me, every one of those daughters looks like Jan Stevenson. Very <laughs> right. Would I lie to my best mate? Possibly. Well, a couple of them do look a bit like Greg Norman, but... <laughs> Nothing wrong with Greg Norman. I gotta be honest, Nudge, the thought of Greg Norman in a dress doesn't do a lot for me. Yeah, me neither. Don't forget Jan Stevenson. Yeah. Maybe it is an interesting job after all. You, you see, my way. Well, come on, let's go. Wouldn't want to keep him waiting. Well, hang on. Have you got your protective gear? Well, do I need it? Do you need it? You bet. Gosh, it's dangerous out there. It's like the charge of the light brigade. Force to the left of you, force to the right. You need every bit of protection you can get if you want to get up nice and close and check out their... Well, <laughs> mashy nibblicks. <laughs> I'm convinced. Right then. Air beaters, here we come. <laughs> I haven't had a dinner like that since Stan took me to see the Walgett Amateur Musical Society's annual production of Bullock, the musical. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Oh, it's really good. It was written by old Harry Goodwin, the local butcher. It's about this fictitious butcher who, who was a really famous country and western singer and he turned to drink when his wife was tragically drowned in a sheep dip accident. <laughs> Sounds dramatic. Oh, it is. Harry's really talented. He used to be a famous country and western singer until his wife drowned. Drowned? How? No, no one knows. He, he doesn't like to talk about it. Oh. Well, has he written much else? Oh, yeah, heaps. There's Mutton the Musical, Pork the Musical, um, Potty Calf the Pantomime, and not to mention his minor classic, Jesus Cow Super Calf. <laughs> of you both to ask me to stay in that. And Jenny, your fish in muesli sauce was just mm, mm, delicious. But I really should go home. No. But you can't. It's not safe. Oh, but, but what about Dobbin? You can't. Yeah. He gets really upset if he misses a go-cat commercial. <laughs> it's really cute. We both sit in front of the telly and, and, when, and when they say, who wants go-cat, we go, me, 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 me. <laughs> you to stay if we didn't care about you. Good evening, Deborah, Jennifer, Elizabeth. So nice to see you all. Hi, Dad. Hi, Simon. Uh, how come you're doing the washing up? Because Jenny doesn't take bank card. <laughs> Who? Oh, never mind. So, how was work? Great. Oh, that's a change. What, did you get a pay rise? Much better than that. Come on, come on, Dad. Sit down, sit down. What? I want you to be the first to know. Today, I met the woman I'm going to marry. Oh, I didn't know Kylie Minogue played golf. <laughs> it, no, seriously, Dad. It, it was a magic moment. A magic moment? Yeah, there I was with my crash helmet. Crash helmet? You're a greenkeeper, not a human cannonball. Dad, it was ladies' day at the golf club. You need protective gear to get nice and close. Ask Nudge. Right, I will. Yeah, there I was with my crash helmet shoving blood and bone onto the roses. Oh, gee, that's so romantic. <laughs> and the glint of the sun on her five iron caught my eye. I turned in slow motion. And there she was, an angel, bathed in a golden aura of sunlight, just like the shampoo commercial. <laughs> you see what I mean, Dad? I'm trying, I'm trying. What was her name? Oh, I don't know. Her husband drove her home before I had a chance to talk to her. <laughs> All right. Entertainment. Betty, for a piece of pie... Who sang the country and western classic, Stand By Your Man? Oh, that's easy. Harry Goodwin. Oh, not Harry Goodwin again. She always answers Harry Goodwin. Well, Harry Goodwin's not the answer on the card. Well, the card must be wrong again. Oh, <laughs> give her a piece of pie. Oh, this game's really too easy. <laughs> oh, look, my 
my disc is full. Does that mean I've won? Yes, it does. Thanks to Harry Goodwin. Congratulations, Betty. <coughs> want for coffee? Oh, no, not for me, thanks. Well, I'd better be off. I'll just get my coat and my bag. We've got to make a stay. We could scare him to stay. Good idea. Yeah, nightmare on Jacaranda Street. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for a lovely dinner. Ah, uh, Betty, no. You're staying here tonight. It's getting too late. Oh, no, no, no. I'll be all right. All the burglars will be in bed by now. <laughs> burglars in bed? No way, Betty. They stay out to really late. Yeah, really, really late. Oh, to all hours. Till after nine o'clock, even. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes even later. Betty, you wouldn't want to go out now. All sorts of things start to come out. When it's dark. You mean like little ring-tailed possums? Oh, they're so cute. No, more like huge road bull missing link-tailed possums. Ooh. Demented creatures of the night searching for corrugated iron roofs to gallop across at the stroke of midnight. Oh, I bet you're just making all that up. No. No, it's like that thing we saw in the paper the other day. You saw it, didn't you, Simon? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Jenny saw it too, didn't you, Jen? What's the matter with your eyes, Simon? <laughs> yeah, she saw it too. Yeah, uh, anyway, it was a night just like tonight. There were these four people sitting alone in a house. Oh, that's silly. H how can they be alone if, if there's four of them? <laughs> well, they were sitting together alone in a house. Oh. Anyway, suddenly, the lights dimmed. <gasps> <gasps> and then, they heard a noise. <gasps> oh, sorry, pardon me. <laughs> it, it, it was like a... A strange scratching noise. Mm, sort of like nudge going through the fridge? <laughs> no, no, even more horrible than that. Like nothing they'd ever heard before. <laughs> Jenny, we've heard that before. <laughs> anyway, they were frozen to the spot when suddenly there it was again. And the voice from beyond the grave said, Who's been using my shape? <laughs> Just a minute. What's the light doing off? Don't, don't do that. What, walk into my living room and turn the light on? No, don't scare us like that. Why did the voice beyond the grave say, Who's been using my shaver? <laughs> what? Oh. Ah, cut it out. Well, look, I didn't do anything. Who turned out the light? Oh, I don't know. Look, it must be a power failure. Look, has anyone got a torch? I think Jenny's got one. I can't find it. Why not? It's dark. Oh, get out of it. <sighs> It's the burglar. Oh, it's not the burglar. Oh, Simon, get off my foot. I didn't stand on your foot. Oh, well, who was it then? Ah! <laughs> Hello, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Nudge. <laughs> what are you doing dressed like that? I told you, Mr. Kelly, it was Air Beater's Arvo. Oh, oh, what are you doing having a seance? <laughs> Oh, wow, look, Mr. Kelly, the science is working. <laughs> Betty's talking in tongues. Well, that's another job well done by Kelly and Sons, locksmiths to the terminally bewildered. <laughs> I hope you were taking notes, Nudge. Yeah, I never knew you could hammer screws in with your thumb. Oh, yeah, well, <clears throat> that's what improvising is all about, Nudge. Just a minute, what's, what's this doing here? Simon? Yes, Dad. Come in here a minute, will you? What was the video doing on the floor? Well, I don't know. What was the video doing on the floor? Well, I wasn't doing anything, Mr. Kelly. It was just lying <laughs> You mean, you mean you didn't put it there? No. Oh, no. We've been burgled. Well, Mr. Kelly. What? There's a note here for you. What? What, what does it say? It says, to the householder, could you please ensure in the future that you have a VHS video, as them cheap old beta machines is hard to flog off. <laughs> Chatswood cat burglar. Kiss, kiss, kiss. How dare he? This video is state of the art. Oh, more like state of the art. <laughs> yeah, my Uncle Trevor swapped one of those for a set of spanners and a headlight off an E.H. Alden. I don't believe it. I'm surrounded by a nation of video snobs. Well, I'll show you. Oh, no, now, Dad. Oh, no, no, no. I'll prove it. People know quality when they see it. I bet I can get good money for this any time I like. How? I'm going down the pub to flog it myself. <laughs>
The show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network.